Right, I have my 2006 F350 with the 6.0, and we're going to be charging the, the AC system up today. <clears throat> I've got um, four cans of 134A, and I've rented a kit here. You can get this at AutoZone. They're pretty good about renting these. Um, it is like $300 deposit to rent this and you're going to get you know your gauges your connectors and your hoses and uh, so this thing is pretty easy to use and I'll show you how to go ahead and get this set up now that's uh, also includes the pump over here I've got the pump setting over there and I'll show you um, show you where the there's an oil fill They'll always fill this up for you, but just make sure that it has oil in this little window right here to that level line. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how we're going to get these, these hoses and everything set up. And the first thing that we're going to do is just take, take all these out and we're just going to get we see we got this end here and that's just going to screw right onto this now these do, don't have to be tightened with a wrench you could just hand tighten these it's got an o-ring on there it doesn't have to be real tight so we're just going to go ahead and get this red one hooked up here to that connector okay and then the same thing here we're going to take our blue hose and just uh, screw that right into our blue connector Okay, so now we're just going to take the other end of this blue hose and we're going to attach it right here on our blue low side port and we'll get that screwed down. Like I said, just hand tighten those. And now we just uh, fasten our red connector to the high side. Okay, now we take a look at our yellow hose and you'll notice this end looks different from this end. This is the end that we're going to attach to our gauge and we're going to attach it right here in the middle just like we did those other hoses. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, screw that on to there. Okay now if your gauge setup is like this one <clears throat> okay if you turn these clockwise just going to turn them off you'll notice right here there's a brass cap if your gauge is like this just go ahead and remove that now. We're just going to set that in our container so we don't lose it. Now you'll notice there's a Schrader valve. That's just a pressure relief so when we uh, get ready to purge this I'll show you that. So now that we've got all of our hoses and our connectors we're just going to carefully take this over to the truck and I'll show you how to set this up now. Okay so we've got our red and our blue connector and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for our low pressure port to connect our blue connector into and for that we're going to come so if we're on the passenger side here come over here to our dryer and look around here you'll notice a black cap right here just go ahead and remove that and make sure to put that in a bag or a safe place so they're good about getting lost so we're just going to take this connector we have it this part is turned counterclockwise for open so or actually as far as the the, uh, the valve being pushed up when you put it on there you actually screw it clockwise to open up the Schrader valve but right now we want it turned counterclockwise so we're just going to go ahead and just get back in here and you'll this connector you see it pushes up like that we'll push that back as we're pushing down and we'll get that locked in there and you'll know it when you get it locked on because it won't move and now that we got it on there we'll take and turn this clockwise that's going to open that valve okay now I would point out that this system is completely empty already you should have had your system emptied out if it had any in it so now we're just going to locate our um, our high port which you come right here it's very easy to get to just right back here 
by the, the by the battery now yours may be a little bit different depending on your year and model now the same thing here we want this turned counterclockwise until we get it on here and we're just gonna get this snap down as well <clears throat> and I'm gonna probably need my other hand this one's being a little bit more stubborn here okay so I've got that snapped on there and the same thing we're gonna go ahead and turn this clockwise and open that up okay so now that we got that hooked up these right now are closed they're turned clockwise I was showing you earlier so they're closed so now we're gonna come down here to our pump and you'll notice this the, the fuel spout here this um, will probably be on here like this but the one that we're going to be using is this top one and you're just going to take like I said this has got the little hook on this end and we're just going to take and fasten that right into there and like I said all these can just be um, hand tight is good enough and we'll notice right here is our switch and we make sure that we've got our pump plugged in so I'm gonna go ahead and check my connections and make sure they're tied here okay so now we're just gonna come back here and we're gonna flip the switch on our pump you can hear it running there and now what we're gonna do is come up here and we're going to actually open these gauges up. We've got them closed right now. But we've got our these both turned clockwise. And they're locked down onto our ports. Now we're going to come up here. And we're going to turn this counterclockwise and open it up. You can hear the difference in the pump. We're going to open this side here as well. And that's going to vacuum out from both sides there and get a good vacuum on this. Now we're going to leave this for several hours and then we'll come back and we'll check and uh, we're going to find out if we're holding pressure. Okay so we've let this thing go a few hours and we come back and we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn both of these knobs, tighten them clockwise and we're going to go ahead and shut our pump off and now what we're going to do is just watch where our gauge is and we'll let this set for a little while and you can let it set every how long you want you know 30 minutes hour whatever and we're going to see if it's going to hold and maintain that vacuum so we'll just come back here shortly Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes or so. We're going to come back here and take a look. And as we can see, our gauge has not moved any. So now we're ready to um, go ahead and see about getting some, some 134A back into the system. Now, um, what you're going to need to get, along with renting this kit here, is you'll need to make sure they give you a one of these taps and you may have to buy it I had to buy this one because one didn't come with a kit and all you do with this is you just screw this down on to your can right there so in other words this needle is going to be all the way up you're going to screw that tap down onto the can with this open counterclockwise once you get it screwed down on the, to the can, it doesn't have to be real tight, you'll go counter or you'll go clockwise with it and puncture that seal. So really simple. I've already actually gotten this and punctured. I actually had um, a half a can sitting around and coincidentally <clears throat> that's going to be my next point here. If you'll come under your truck you know, right like I said, I don't know if it's like this on every truck, but on mine, you'll look right here is a sticker. And it'll say it's got excursion with rear AC excursion, and then it's got the F series and excursion without the rear AC. And in my case, it's calling for two pounds and 10 ounces. 
and then it also tells you how much oil that it needs in the system nine fluid ounces so if we need two pounds uh, and ten ounces we're going to need 42 ounces all together to uh, to fill the system up so um, just check your sticker if you got one if not you know these may be similar for the like I said for the F series you may can go by this like I said two pounds and ten ounces and uh, you know for the excursion the stuff are different so uh, 42 ounces comes out to be right at um, three and a half cans so that's what we're going to uh, put in the system and we're also going to monitor our pressures and stuff and I was looking at a chart earlier and I kind of I got a reference here and like I said you know we want to put the proper amount you know the PSI and the pressure is not going to tell us how much we got in the system we want to make sure we're getting the proper amount into the system but these are going to be my reference so if it's 80 degrees right now I'm looking at the low 33 to 53 and a high of 147 to 265 so that's where we're at <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is we want to get this tap hooked up to our yellow hose here so we're gonna go ahead and do that now okay so all we've done is just screwed this on to our tap gauges are still closed and uh, the next step we're gonna get our we're gonna go ahead and get our um, AC on get cranked up and get our AC on and um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to trying to get some uh, get some uh, Freon in here um, now one other thing we're gonna have to do here is we can go actually we can go ahead and do this now we're gonna open this up so we're gonna just turn it counterclockwise and get it open and we're gonna hit our purge valve there now once once you get you know air coming out of there you're gonna know that you got the the uh, air purged out of the system so it's just got a Schrader valve we're gonna press that and we're gonna purge the air that's in this line once we open this can up so we're gonna go ahead and do that now okay so we've come in here we've just set it to max cool max AC now what we're gonna do we're not gonna open this red knob but we're gonna open this blue knob we're gonna go ahead and turn it counterclockwise all the way start getting free on in here okay so we just got our first uh, half can in we're gonna go ahead and move on to the second can to remove this can turn your blue valve back clockwise make sure it's off and then we're just going to unscrew this fitting right here from our tap. Okay, so I can show you on this one, the needle is counterclockwise. That knob counterclockwise needles all the way up. And we'll just screw that tap down. And once we get it fully tightened down, then we can go ahead and turn our needle and and we puncture the seal but we're going to go ahead now this needle will seal but I'm going to go ahead and get it hooked up to my yellow line before I do this okay so we've turned that clockwise and screwed it down to puncture our seal so now we're going to have to turn it back counterclockwise all the way to open it up now because we took this loose we're going to also have to purge our straighter valve right there again. I know this thing is twisting around on me here. But we're going to have to take and push on that straighter valve just enough to purge out the little bit of air that would be in there. We have to do that with every single can. Okay, so now we're opening, turning this counterclockwise, opening our blue 
knob back up so our Freon can go into the system. Don't touch your eye side. And sometimes you can like shake these cans a little bit. Kind of help get it in the system. So this is, uh, this will be one and a half cans once this one's in. Oh, and by the way, there's a window right here. You can watch this uh, Freon going in through that window there as well. As you move it, you can see it going through there. All right, so we're moving on to this second to the last can. And I would point out that it's normal to have a little bit of air left in the can, not much, when you go to unscrewing that, so don't panic. Um, it was a can and a half before I really got this compressor to engage in somewhat. You can see where we're at here. I've actually got a little bit of cool air coming out right now from the inside. And again, we can refer to this, so like it's probably more like 85 now. It was 80, but uh, anywhere we're at 80, 33 to 53, and we we're at like about 32 or 33, and then 147 to 265. Let me just show you where we're at again. Looks like we're, we're at 245-ish maybe, up around there. And then we're at like 34 over on this side. Okay, so every time we remove the can, close the load, turn that knob, tighten it, close our tap. And we're gonna just take it loose right here. And when we get another one on, we always purge the line. And you see, right now, the normal on the line can go as high as 57 and 280 on the high side. And I still like one can getting this fully filled. So we're just gonna monitor this and see what happens. Okay, so this is the last can here, and we've got it blowing pretty cold coming out of the cab right now. Okay, and it's like 86 out here right now, so like I said, my low can go as high as 57, the high as high as 280, according to my chart. So this is going to change with the temperature. It's actually 86, not 85. This is what I had jotted down earlier. Okay, so that's all she wrote on that can. We just emptied the last can, and right now it's hovering around 53, looks like. We're uh, under 275 there, or more around 260 on the high. And uh, we've got this closed off. Let's go check and see how it feels inside. Okay, so we got it max AC in here and it's just blowing ice cold in here right now so uh, everything appears to be good you know of course we'll uh, follow up and we'll check for leaks and everything and uh, make sure that uh, make sure everything's holding but right now it's it's working excellent okay so the last thing we got to do is we just need to get our caps back on we'll just get these disconnected and get our caps back on our our ports there but everything's looking good and like i said i hope this has helped somebody out um, you know you know where your locations are anyways if you have one of these trucks and your sticker that shows the amount of freon you should have in the system so uh I said that's going to conclude this video and i thank y'all for watching